am, James. I'm sitting with elephants, but I'm not on the other end of Juma. I'm very, very close to where you are sitting, Mr. Henry. And so these elephants are all around Chelapan, which is just a little bit south of where James is. As James mentioned, my name is Tristan, and on camera today I do have a VM, the wildebeest. There we go. There's a little thumb from VM. This is live. It is interactive, which of course means that you can actually ask questions and get hold of us. So hashtag Safari Live or YouTube chat if you would like to get hold of us. Now we have a beautiful herd of elephants that have come down towards Chelapan, which is in a way really cool and in another way not so cool because we were hoping that we would find young Hosanna just sleeping and resting in this area, but he seems to have moved on. Although the way these elephants are all kind of fronting up, I think Hosanna might be lying somewhere close by. Liam, let's just try and check here in front because the Ellie's are kind of looking towards this direction and they're kind of taking a few steps. There's a little baby there. Let's see, maybe if we go forward, Hosanna might be lying somewhere in the shade here. I don't quite know where Steve left him this morning, so I just want to check in all the shady spots. I don't think he would have gone far with a full belly, although you never know with Hosanna because he moves so much and he does like to move a bit during the day as well, so maybe he's moved on. Maybe the Ellie's have chased him, but just the way that they're all kind of bunched up, you see how they all tightly packed together? I thought maybe, just maybe, there was a little leopard's in section, which could be very possible. We'll have to just look nicely. It also could be because there's a tiny baby in amongst there. So there's a very wobbly baby, maybe a baby that was born at some stage yesterday. It could be, or even last night, because it's really quite wobbly on its feet. The way that it's standing, you can see those little legs are buckling and moving quite a bit. And the fact that everybody's bunched around it could potentially mean that it's a fairly newborn. The other thing that we have here is some really big bull elephants. So there's a massive bull elephant elephant in the background. He's also here and so that's causing a bit of a, a ruckus in the herd. So Francis from Israel, you think that that's why they're a bit anxious, is that they're protecting the baby? Well, I think it's twofold. I think not only they're protecting the baby, maybe they smell a leopard here, and maybe they know that Hosanna was around in this section, but I think more than anything is that these big bulls are causing a bit of a ruckus. So there are a number of big boys around here, and they keep chasing some of the females. And you can see, look, as the male leaves, now look at how this herd has disbanded out, and so the little one is now a lot more exposed than what it was. But they're all sort of sniffing at it. It is very small that little one so that is a tiny new baby that is around which is very cool and so maybe there's another female that's in heat and the boys are causing a bit of panic and that's why everybody is sort of trying to protect this little baby in case one of those big males comes close now you can see two of the males just squaring off there those are the two smaller ones there's the third is a really large male which I, I don't quite know there he is he's just on the right there behind that bush so maybe he'll come out just now as well <laughs> Insanity, you're wondering if the matriarch elephant is always the biggest? No, not necessarily. Sometimes you will find that there will be bigger females within the herd structure, but she might just be sort of from a different lineage or she might have joined from a different reason and so she's maybe not the matriarch of that particular herd or you'll have a situation where genetically there's a female that is the matriarch and another female that grows up underneath that female gets slightly larger but yet she's not as experienced and not as sort of in tune with what's going on and so they oh no it fell down oh shame little one did you just fall I think this little one must be newer than we think maybe a matter of hours old given that it's look how it's struggling to stand up oh no come on up onto your feet there we go see mom look look how mom is picking it up see mom is using its trunk to try and pick it up look at that isn't that incredible see all of them so they wrap their trunk around its body like a little harness and they lift it so that it can get to its feet to get the strength to be able to stand I wonder if this baby is not even newer than we even think maybe during the day today maybe in the last few hours it's incredibly hot today so it would dry very fast if it was born recently I mean the, the time for it to dry would be like I say very quick so maybe it was born late all well, this afternoon or around lunchtime area it's difficult to know but it would explain why the herd is sticking around because you would expect a herd like this to move and not to stand right in the sun like they are at the moment but for some reason they're sticking around and the baby is very wobbly so maybe that's the reason why it's very very cool to see either way it is tiny that little one and definitely not very well balanced at all so we'll hopefully see it trying to move away I'm sure this herd is going to try and find 
some semblance of shade. It must be incredibly hot for not only them, but the little baby as well. Now, the interesting thing about this whole process is that those females that are standing there are all fairly young females. None of those are particularly big. You can see here comes a much larger female who's actually got much bigger teeth or mammary glands and so I wonder if she's not the one that is actually the mother and she just went for a quick cooling down and the siblings have just protected around her because I don't see any other females there that are lactating at the moment but I could be wrong. Now look here comes the big male. You see how much bigger he is than the females. He's going to come towards them and look at how the females are wrapping around that little calf. Isn't this just the most phenomenal behavior from these elephants and look at the size difference. He towers way over those females. He is massive in comparison to them and that little baby is hard to think that it's going to go from that small if it's a male all the way to that massive individual like you see there now we can definitely confirm that the female that is in front that's closest to us isn't the mom so that little one is suckling from it so amazing to see that the other members of the herd looked after it while the female went just to go cool down she's probably been in the sun she's probably had a, exerted a lot of energy if she's given birth recently and so while she went to go and cool down slightly they others looked after her and just wrapped around her and made sure that they're looking after this little calf. But how cool is that? You've got from absolutely tiny, from new, all the way up to as big as males can be. I mean, you can see the height of his shoulders in comparison to those females. Gives you a really good idea. Is amazing. It just shows you that male elephants are really not small animals at all. You always see females and you think they're massive and then you see these males in comparison and you can realize just how big they are at the shoulder in particular and look at the size of his head in comparison to those females heads. His head is almost double the size. You can imagine how much strength and power is inside there. Absolutely incredible. How cool is this? What a way to start our safari. It really is the best way to start is a big herd of elephants the prospect of a leopard sitting somewhere here watching all of this going on it really is a good like i say a good omen for a successful afternoon that we should have So I believe a lot of you are a bit concerned or worried that this bull will hurt the calf. Well, elephants are insanely intelligent animals and while the bull might be you know, close to the calf and, and might represent some sort of danger in terms of he could knock that calf over, you can see what these others are doing. So the adults, females and, this, and the siblings of that little calf have created a protective barrier. So even if that bull comes, they will almost sacrifice themselves in a way so they'll get hit by that bull long before that little calf will. And so the bull's not going to be interested in hurting it in any way. They're not like lion and leopards where they'll come around and they'll try and kill the baby to bring that female into estrus. Male elephants are not like that at all. So he's just curious. He'll sniff that little elephant and then now you see he's just walked off. He's no longer even interested in what's going on here. He knows that there's no female to mate with here. So he's now looking for the female that is in estrus. So he's sniffing the ground, sniffing all the dung, looking around, trying to see which is the female that they are picking up the scent for that is in estrus. So that that little calf perfectly safe at this stage. I don't think he needs to worry too much. And, and mom and, and siblings almost certainly detect it as much as possible. Keep it as safe as they can over the next little bit. But this is so cool. We're watching an amazing sort of thing unfold. And, and elephants, they are such intelligent animals that to sit and spend time with them in a situation like this where you've got the females and the males and these little tiny calf and see the social interactions between them is just absolutely fascinating. Right, well we're going to stay with our elephant herd because I don't really want to go anywhere. There's so much that potentially could happen here with big bulls and little babies and like I say, a potential of a leopard making an appearance. So while we sit here, I believe James is out and about with his toys once again and I think Ronald is now making another predator acquaintance for the week. Well, indeed, I said it's always a toss-up which is cuter in terms of the baby animal world. They all, I suppose, are very cute. There's not very many ugly babies out there, that's for sure. But the little one, as you can see, is being very well sheltered, not only from the big rampaging males that are around here, but also from a perspective of this harsh sun that we've got this afternoon. It is incredibly warm, and so for a little baby like that, it's going to dehydrate, and its ears are very sensitive still to the sun that they could 
get sunburnt. And so it's important that it stays in the shade of these siblings and adults and make sure that the sun doesn't get on it too much. And so you can see it's perfectly positioned and there's a little sun hitting it every now and then. But for the most part, it's nice and shady underneath all of those tummies and it can fit in very well as mom has a little dust bath and all of the others sit and allow it to regain its strength as it tries to work out how to use these legs. Now, the male is, seems to be coming back again. This looks like the cheekier one of the three. He's not the biggest, but he's quite cheeky, this individual, and I think he might get a rough welcome if he comes too close. Look at how these guys will tighten their ranks, and they'll make sure that they keep that bull at bay. There'll also be a lot of communication taking place between them. A lot of it we won't be able to hear. Well, nine of it, we're not going to be able to hear it. It's that very low frequency sound that basically will tell that bull, don't come here, there's a little baby, you need to be careful and keep him at bay as much as possible. You can see now he's stopped to feed and is not very perturbed at all. Now interestingly enough, sorry, now that I look at that big bull elephant, you might notice just above him is actually a bird that's sitting there and I didn't notice it very well earlier but it's sitting and it's just perched and I'm surprised because this time of the day in the heat that we've got, you would expect most of the birds of prey to be riding the thermals and to be out and about but this yellow billed kite is just sitting here and I wonder if it maybe didn't see an opportunity to feed off some of the afterbirth of this elephant because what they will do is even though yellow billed kites are able to catch their own food and they'll hunt termites and they'll hunt various other small insects and birds. So what they are known for is also coming down onto roadkill and also any bits of carrion that's left behind. And so the afterbirth of a elephant might be the perfect snack for a yellow-billed kite and that's why it could be sitting here is because of that reason. Is the afterbirth might have been close by and it's now just flown up into the tree waiting for the earlies to move off. It can then come down and feed off it or it's going to feed off the where the elephants have defecated and there are a number of insects that might be around that as well. So interesting though that this bird is in sort of even though it's not related to the elephants in any way, it's using the elephants for a food source by the looks of things. It might be wrong, but and it might just be a coincidence, but I doubt that that bird would be sitting for that long in the bright, hot sun, exposed like that, if it wasn't for a reason that it was waiting for these elephants to move off or trying to follow them along as they're defecating and using their dung, basically, as their attraction. But look at the power of these animals. It is absolutely amazing to watch when they move those trees. So Billy, who's five years old, hello Billy, I hope that you had having a wonderful weekend. You want to know, do elephants like to play? Elephants love to play, Billy. They are one of the most playful animals that we get out here. You'll find if it's a nice cool morning and it's overcast and there's not too much wind, then the little baby elephants are a joy to watch. They'll go up and down and round and round and they chase after, each, chase after birds and waterfalls and harlers and all these other animals that out as they try and work out how to use their trunk and how to run nicely and so they're very playful. The adults not so much. You, you don't see big bull elephants playing too much when they get really large like the male that we have here then you're going to see that they're going to be a little bit more serious but when they're young bull elephants and young females then they play a lot. They push each other as well and they'll try and test each other's strength so lots of playing that goes on when you're a baby elephant or when you're an elephant in general actually and then when they go down to water, Billy. They absolutely love water. So in a day like today, you'll find that they'll go into the mud and they'll throw their mud on all over themselves and they'll roll around in it and they'll lie down and they'll get up and then they'll lie back down in it. And so it becomes a big game when there's a lot of mud around as well. So they are animals that love to play a lot. You can actually see that a lot of them are actually covered in mud at the moment, and that's because it's a warm day, Billy. So they, even the adults, I think, have gone for a little muddy wallow to try and keep nice and cool on a hot day. It's like if you are very hot, maybe you go and jump into the swimming pool and try and cool down. Although I don't know where you're from, Billy, but if you're in the United States, I'm sure that you are not very hot at all at the moment, particularly on the eastern side of the United States. I believe it is very, very cold, that side of the world at the moment. But look at that little face. Isn't that the sweetest thing? Is your tongue hanging out. It does look like its tongue's hanging out, doesn't it? Are you hot, little one? Shame. It's, I think its tongue's hanging out because it's a little hot. 
No. Oh well, it will be all right. It will. It will be okay. And the, the fact is, is that the the adults are protecting it nicely and making sure that it is well sheltered. And if it needs water, they will guide it to the to the breast and to the mammary gland to allow it to suckle and to drink. Mother elephants are incredibly good with that. I, I've seen elephants give birth before and and watch the whole process. And when they will need that first bit of milk, they'll actually guide them using the trunk straight towards their teats and allow them to then suckle from there so pretty incredible right well we're not going to go anywhere there's no reason to it's amazing to have the ellies back one and two to have a little baby in amongst them so while we sit here and enjoy these big pachyderms let's go across to james and his beautiful painted dogs well, it is fascinating, James. It is really interesting to watch. I think that this elephant was born during the day today. So we know that Steve was here this morning. There were no elephants here. And I have a funny feeling that it was born right here. And that's why it's still learning how to move around. I can just see it coming out of this wall of sort of elephants that are around us. There's some big bulls around. But really large male has just arrived now as well. A massive individual that is slowly starting to come this way. And they're all sniffing around that area. So I want to go and have a little look there just now. I want to wait until that massive male, there he is. You see, look at the size of him. He's got massive, big, thick tusks. He's bigger than the other bull that we had here just now. So he's old and wrinkly and massive tusks. And look how he's sniffing in the air. He's got his trunk up, just smelling around. And he sat for a very long time, very close to where those other elephants are. And he was sniffing the ground. And I wonder if that wasn't where it gave birth. It maybe just could be that situation. Now, Julia, I think I'm getting this right. Just, Megan, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were asking if a lot of elephants would be more protective of a young one than a fewer elephants. Is that the correct way? I think so. I'm not 100% sure. I broke up a little bit as you were coming through. But if that is the case, then the more elephants, the, the you know, at the end of the day, the better it's going to be. Uh, So there we go, Julia. Sorry, I got the wrong end of that altogether. But you asking if a young male elephant would be as protective. Um, was there something wrong with that little calf? Did you see that? Sorry, Julia, I'll get into your question now. But it looks like its mouth... There's a split, you see that, between its trunk and its mouth. Almost like it's got a cleft palate. That's really interesting. I've never seen that in my life before. It's not its mouth. Its mouth is lowered down by the looks of things. And just now there was a funny sound coming from in amongst them. And I thought maybe its trunk sounded like it was blocked. And it seems as though there might be a little issue there. You see that? That doesn't look like its mouth... Its mouth looks like it's lower than that. Or is it its mouth? It just could be a funny angle. No, it is its mouth. Sorry, it's just the folds of skin. It looks okay. No, all is all right. We don't need to worry. It's just the way that the mouth is hanging open at this stage. Now, back to what you're asking, Julia. You're asking a young male elephant, would he be as protective? Yes, a young male elephant, if he's part of that family and he's part of, if he was born to the same mother, he's going to be very, very protective of that little one. He's going to come to its defense. And some of these elephants that are around that little baby as well, look how fluffy its tummy is <laughs> it's got hair all over its tummy it's super fluffy but if it was in that group and a, another elephant came along he will most certainly protect it and try and make sure that it is looked after and it is made to kind of feel safe and, and that there is a boundary between it and everybody else so you'll find the situation that no matter if it's a young male or a female if they are part of that family unit and it's the same mother they will be highly protective of their sibling and make sure that their little one is safe and you can see look as the little one takes a step so the rest of them take a step as the little one takes and then the rest goes so they all trying to kind of keep it as safe as possible the whole grouping of them and so even though some of those will probably not be this female's offspring they are trying to kind of make sure that they protect it as much as possible but there you go see it's trying to suckle every now and then shame little one you are brand new i think you are only a few hours old if that maybe even an hour or two this is so cool to see. We have been so, so spoilt on Juma the last few months. We've had so many amazing baby animal sightings. We've had Tundi's cub, Footloose the wildebeest, um, Scott's little baby wildebeest that was born. We've got this one. We've got all kinds of the little lapwing chicks, I mean plover chicks that we had. We've had a lot of baby animals that we've been able to see take their first few steps in life. And so amazing to be a part of this. And I'm 99.9% .9 sure now that that kite is here for the afterbirth. 
birth and that they gave birth right here. The fact that this herd is also sitting for as long as it is in this area would definitely mean that they are probably just waiting for this little one to start kind of being able to move and start trying to actually kind of be able to be on its feet and solid enough to that they can go and get out of the hot sun. But until then, it's everybody's going to be as stay stationary as possible. And you can see there's a bit of arging, argy bargy that's going on. There's, you see that? Look here. You see? And look at how the female reacts. She gets involved very quickly. She says, uh-uh. They're coming as well. They're coming to investigate what's going on, who needs protection. They're all going to come in and try and just huddle around, make sure that everything's okay. That little one squashed into the middle. Now, hopefully they don't think that I'm the cause of all of this because I've, we've done nothing wrong. We've just been sitting here. There was just one cheeky little male that tried to go and investigate. And look how that adult female that just came in, she's coming to investigate as well. So she's one of the older females within the herd, and she's just coming, sniffing this new little calf, making sure everything's okay, working out who this new member is and it's amazing to me that vocalizing you can see even though that female is not related to that tiny little calf they've all come running in to try and protect it and to make sure they heard a little distress from these elephants and they quickly made sure that they were all there to try and protect it is that not just the most incredible display of intelligence and, and caring amongst a, a herd of animals that you can possibly witness amazing we are being super spoiled. This is not something that we're going to see very often and certainly not something that we will probably witness in the next few years, I would imagine. It's, you know, these things don't happen very often. Finding Ellie's giving birth and, and sort of having brand new little calves where the herd is still having to stay stationary and wait for it to start moving is not an everyday occurrence. Very cool to see. Wow. Look at that. You can see how they're all tucked up together in there. And that poor little one is sandwiched in amongst all of that. Now, the really nice thing is that we're going to have a situation where with a female that is actually the mother is going to be quite easy to recognize because she's got these kind of skewed out tusks. So that's going to be cool. Now, our big male is starting to get a little bit funny with Taxon. So we're going to have to watch him. He is in must. If you look on his back legs there, you can see there's dribbling all along those back leg area. It's quite black in color. So he is in must and he's kind of just getting a little bit sort of not grumpy, but he's showing off his size a little bit. So we're just going to need to watch him a little bit. Now, amazed man, you're wondering how long can an elephant's trunk get? Well, if you look at that big bull elephant, that big bull elephant, I would say at the trunk height where it's kind of touching up towards the tusks is probably maybe close to about six foot, just under six foot, and that's not completely sort of from ground to the tusks, and that's not actually stretched out. You can see the rest of the trunk is coiled at the bottom there, so his trunk will probably easily be about eight feet if it was really stretched, which is really long if you think about it. It is absolutely fascinating to see how they're able to manipulate that trunk, but big bull elephant like that between seven, I'd say about seven and a half feet probably maximum on a trunk like that, but absolutely incredible. Now, just the size difference of these animals is phenomenal. There's a massive female, the one behind him. So it looks like a young animal that's coming up behind that big bull. She, if you saw her by herself, you would think that that is a really large female, a big, massive matriarchal female, but she is dwarfed by that massive male. And she looks just like a little one in comparison. In fact, both these males that we've got here are huge. They almost look like pillars on either side of her, protecting her at the moment. Look at that. You see these two tall kind of animals, they're facing in the same way, and almost looks as though they are the in for keeping everybody safe and making sure issues. How amazing is this? And also just to see the dynamics of having the big bulls here. Now, I'm sure the bulls have been attracted because of the birth. So they would have heard vocalizing, they would have heard a commotion, and they're interested. They know that there's something going on, and so they come in to check. There might also be a female in heat, but I think it's more a case of that these ladies were giving... And so these big males have come and they've smelt hormones and they've smelt that there's a female that's discharging. And so they're coming to try and investigate what's going on. Incredible to witness, though. 
And amazing how these Ellie's just form this barrier between them. Is he going to lie down? He looks like he might be lying down. He's stretching his legs out. Are you going to sit down, boy? No. He's just giving his back legs a nice big stretch. He's an old boy. You can see on his hips, they're sinking in a little bit there. So that's a sign of age. I would say he's probably easily in his late 40s, maybe even starting to approach 50. And remember that the elephants in this area, most of them won't live past 55 because of the type of terrain we're in and the diet that they have very abrasive towards their teeth and so their lifespan is slightly shorter than those elephants that you'll find in the Masai Mara and even in other parts of Africa so I would say he's a very old boy that and still massive though he's intimidating I can tell you that when he comes towards you he's very intimidating Right, now we're going to, like I say, just carry on sitting here. Why not? There's so much happening. There's so much amazing interaction to watch. And so while we enjoy these Ellie's, let's go across to my friend Brent, who for the first time ever sounds like he is struggling to find a tawny-colored cat in the Mara calf in it and so there's a bit of chaos that is now starting to happen there's a bit of pushing and shoving and everybody's getting a little upset with each other at the moment i think it's such close proximity that when the bulls arrive then the females get a little bit antsy and they try and kind of push them away it's really interesting if you watch this bull on the right hand side he's starting to come in now and we just now as he was coming in that's when the female started to push him and try and get rid of him now the little one he's actually quite far from that male so he's probably going to be all right at the moment he's not going to have a situation where the female will push him just just yet but if he starts coming from behind where that female is she certainly will turn around and try and push him away but amazing just to watch the interactions that are taking place and the way that these males kind of engage with the females and how it all kind of works together and these females are highly tolerant of each other but as soon as a male comes near even the sub-adult males they're getting a rough welcome and it's not a very warm reception at all you see look at a female she can just come straight in no worries no issues but the boys when they start coming now look what this female is she might start turning because the other male is coming from the back now so he's coming towards now let's see what happens you see he's just coming to i think he just wants to investigate more than anything but the adult female if she feels like he's too close might turn around and start to push him but you see how they're all sniffing each other. You see sniffing at the genitals of the female and just trying to work out what's going on. Why is everybody so kind of interested in this tiny little being and just trying to work out the exact sort of reasoning for what's happening. Now here comes the big matriarch as well. She's what I think is the matriarch, certainly the largest and the oldest of the elephants that we have here. And look at how that male backs away immediately as that big female comes in. She, look, now we've got a standoff between the two of them. You see this? This is incredible. Wow. And then back he goes. Now the big bull is coming now, still dribbling. And he's an absolute monster. Now this will give you a really good idea of just how large this male is in comparison to everybody else. And if you see him kind of walking towards those females. see that older females chase that male away is enough for you too close and I wonder what this big male is going to get a reception from this older female as well you see the herd is trying to just kind of push the little calf away take it away from these big boys at the end of the day they don't want to really be too close because if one of those big boys pushes too hard you can obviously hurt a number of them so everybody's just being a bit wary fascinating to watch though unbelievable I would love to see that tiny baby with that male, just to see how much bigger he is. I mean, look at that. That's, it's, it's actually quite scary how he's dwarfing the rest of them. There we go. Look. He is monstrous. That little baby's head is the size of his front foot, just the round part of his front foot. You can see the little baby in right in un underneath his legs there. So there it is. And so baby, then mother, and then dad, or a male that could be the dad in terms of the belly heights. You can see how the belly heights differ. That is just so cool. This is as epic as you could possibly ask for. And he's such a gentleman from, considering he's in must and there's a lot of commotion, you can actually see he almost looks like he's sleeping. You see his eyes are closing? Shame boy, are you tired and hot and wondering why everybody's not paying attention to you? And he's probably seen this all before many times. A male of this size would certainly have been through these kind of things before and has probably seen it all. And that's why he's not really that interested compared to the younger males that maybe this is their first day really witnessing at different 
not with a young calf in it. See, he's got his trunk up, sniffing. Now, that's the direction that we think Hosanna was left in, so somewhere there. So he's just sniffing the breeze from where Hosanna was lying earlier. So, Lynn, you're wondering if a nursing mother's female, well, a nursing mother dies, would another member of the herd come in and suckle that baby and take over? So, Lynn, no. Unfortunately not. Elephants are very particular about their baby suckling from them. They try and make sure that the nutrients that they're getting or giving is to their baby and to give their baby the right sort of um, upstart and, and to give them the right nutrients that they need. Remember that that female, even though she's now, well, there's this youngster that is around, that female needs to breed to be lactating and if she's lactating she needs to make sure that her calf is surviving before she tries to look after any other. She might be able to possibly produce enough milk for two but it would be a very big risk that she would take and she could theoretically you know endanger her own offspring and so she'd rather look after her own offspring first and foremost before she does anything else and so no they don't adopt others it's never been recorded as far as I know um, and so unfortunately if the mother were to die then normally the calf also dies as as well or gets left behind and unfortunately gets then upon us or various other uh, things that are armed. Now these Ellie's have moved off a little bit. I want to go and check where that kite is sitting because the kite is still patient there. So I just want to go back and have a look, see if we can find some semblance of this afterbirth. It might be really cool to go and have a look. Well, you we're right at the back there. There we are. A little tree that we've got to go over. That's okay. That's nothing major. Oh, I forgot how hot it is in the sun. We've been sitting in the shade ever so nicely, VM and I, and I kind of forgot that there is this blazing sunshine that's... Have you got afterbirth right there, Vildi? There's something that resembles afterbirth. Let's go over there quickly, and we'll come back to that just now. Is it a lot, Vildi? It is quite a lot. Okay, well, we'll get to that now. Now, let's have a look here, because they were all sniffing here, and this kite is still sitting right there. So I think maybe this little calf was born somewhere in this general little section. Let's have a look. Maybe even there, will you right? It looks very dark from already from here. Now, I just want to see. There's elephant dung. Oh, there it is. Look there. Well, this is definitely, she gave birth right there. So you can see there's the afterbirth right in the sun. It's still fairly wet, so we must have missed this birth by, I don't even know, maybe an hour or two, if that. I think that's about as close as we must have been to seeing an elephant give birth, and that's why the kite is here. So that's why the kite is being patient. It's waiting for the Ellie's to go, and this is the best view we'll ever get of a yellow-billed kite. Look how close that is. Isn't that cool? So for those of you that have probably, some of you may have never seen a yellow-billed kite, but it is really, really, really cool to see, and you can actually see on the beak it looks as though there's some stuff on it, so maybe it's already been feeding and the Ellie's have chased it a little bit. But definitely, this is where it gave birth, and it must have been, like I say, at some point early this afternoon, or maybe even around lunchtime, because it's still very red and still quite moist, and in this heat, that would dry out incredibly quickly, that, that afterbirth, and you'd have a situation where it would be a little bit more kind of brown and drier than what you see there. Amazing, though. So there we go. She obviously gave birth right here in this section, which is absolutely phenomenal, and it's why that little one is as wobbly as it is. How cool is that? So we were minutes away from, well, hours away, should I say, from a elephant birth. That would have been quite something. I certainly would have enjoyed documenting that, that's for sure, because the elephant birth I've seen, I didn't actually have any photos or any sort of video of it, so it would be really nice to actually have it on video. So I'm just going to turn here and just go to where VM said, because it looks like another big dark patch there, but given that this kite is hanging right there, I'm pretty sure that's where it was initially kind of happened, and then maybe some more over here. Maybe this is where it started, and then she eventually went in there where it was a bit shadier. But you can see what VM was talking about. Here in front, there's a big dark patch on the soil, and you can see actually where this sand has been kicked and moved. So maybe that's where it started, and then she moved it along and it ended up over there but that is so cool to see very very cool guide monkey you wondering where's the cleanup crew and who is the cleanup crew so guide monkey the cleanup crew would probably be the form of this yellow billed kite tawny eagles battalier eagles vultures hyenas even those wild dogs that james is with we're not far from there maybe the dogs come around this side and, and come and have a look hosana if he's around and they move off he might come and have a little look at it so at the end of the day a free meal that he might be able to clean up I'm not sure if he'd eat it but you never know leopards sometimes and vula most certainly would eat that if he came across it 
given the state he's in. So a number of different things would clean up and, and a number of different things will be here. But that kite is going to get first sort of go at it for now. As soon as other birds spot that kite, they're like bataliers, they're going to come in and they're going to try and keep, you know, that kite away. And the bigger, then, the bigger the animal that is around will just dominate what's going on. And if a hyena comes, that will be gone in all of about one second. It will just sort of gulp most of that down very, very quickly. Right. What I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a look around quickly just to see if Wasana is here. Those Ellies are starting to move off a little bit into the bush. They're going into quite a thicket at the moment, and so the little calf is kind of with them. We can still see them very nicely, but they're starting to move into a thicket a little bit, and I really don't want to follow them through thickets. So I'm going to just do a little loop for for Wasana, see if we can find him. If we can't find him, maybe the Ellies are out when we get back, and we'll be able to then have another amazing visual of that little calf. But what a special sighting. Now, while we kind of look the us on, I think let's go back across to Brent Leo Smith. Hopefully he's going to have some luck at some point this afternoon, otherwise he's going to be a very grumpy. But we're still with our Ellies, we've been trying to find Hosanna, we've done big loops around, we've gone through thickets, we've checked in shady areas all around these Ellies, but we cannot find where he's gone. It seems as though these elephants have been absolutely everywhere, and so I think that they must have chased him quite far from where we are now, and he must be lying in some sort of shade somewhere to our south. Now the thing is with that is that to our south is a lot of vegetation, and very, very large block that it goes off towards sort of Treehouse Dam and that area and so it's going to be quite difficult unless he decides to wake up and move or something spots him for us to be able just to find him is going to be really tough. They also they dragged the road with tires today and so all in all likelihood they might have just dragged over the top of where his feet have been and so now we won't even have tracks to work with which will be a bit difficult. But the Eddies are all slowly but surely now coming down to Chelapan to the water and are going to have a it looks like might have a little bit of a drink. The little baby is still in the distance um, where we left it earlier in a little thicket and the rest of them are kind of just milling around and feeding and I'm sure the Ellies are quite happy that it's starting to get to that time of the day where it's going to cool down somewhat. I mean, it's not cool yet, but it's definitely cooling down and it certainly feels a lot more comfortable when, than when we first started. So pretty sure that's going to bring a lot of relief to this whole herd who are still waiting for a little one to get its feet and its legs and they'll probably be still be here around this area tomorrow morning and then they'll start probably moving off by tomorrow morning. It normally takes about that long for a little baby just to work things out. Let's see, it looks like a bit of commotion in the background. There's definitely a bit of dust and pushing and shoving going on there. I don't know what's happening. You see all the bulls are heading there now as well, especially our big fellow. He's decided he's going to go and put himself in the shade. And there's everybody else right in the background. What a ridiculously good sighting we've had of these Ellies. It's been seriously phenomenally good. We've been super fortunate to be able to spend time with them and to see something like that is incredibly rare. We're not going to see little tiny wobbly baby Ellies every day of our lives. We're super fortunate to have found where it even gave birth. It's not something that's very common to see and to find and so very cool. It's also the thing is about it is generally Ellies will actually give birth at night. They're very seldom do they give birth during the day. They typically wait until the night time is when they decide to try and kind of have their little ones. And why that is I'm not quite sure. It's just a strange phenomenon apparently that they do. Whether or not it's 100% true I'm not, uh, not entirely sure either. It's just from what I've read and, and from people who have followed elephants all the time they say that at night there's a much higher birth rate than during the day. But I'm surprised none of them have actually come down for more water. Maybe it's because Chelapan is not actually very tasty. Adam, you're wondering when Ellie's drink, do they get water up their nose like humans do? So no, it's a very different system than what we've got. They've got a membrane that sits at the top of their trunk, so just below basically the eyes there, and that membrane closes off when they suck up water, and it stops the water going into their lungs. The thing about it is if they, if they didn't do that, they'd end up probably drowning themselves because they'd just drink too much. Well, water would just end up going into the lungs and obviously that's not ideal so at this stage well what happens is the membrane closes and they drink up the water and they'll then get water into the trunk and from there they can then push it out with that air in the lungs back into the mouth and drink like that so maybe a little bit of residue water every now and then might go into the lungs but not too much 
but you can hear the birds are starting to call and I thought for a second maybe they had seen our leopard but it was just the yellow-billed kite has taken off and is now flying down towards the Mulawati. I think maybe it's had enough. But what is quite interesting is in that tree, which I didn't notice earlier, sorry, Vildi, is that there's a whole bunch of white balls of foamless tree frogs. Look at how high that is above the ground. So if you ever wondered how high these tadpoles sometimes have to fall from, that can give you a really good idea. You saw earlier how big that bull elephant was. So there he is and that gives you a good scale of how tall that tree is and those poor tadpoles are going to be free falling from that height so it's going to be quite something when they drop into the tree hopefully we don't get too many more hot days because otherwise chiller pan is going to dry up and those tadpoles are going to land on hard ground which i'm sure is not going to go very well at all but they're very very high up there that's crazy I wonder if there's any frogs still out there. They all look quite old though. I think it's from the last time we had some serious rain. Most of them look as though they're getting a bit of a yellow tinge to them and dehydrating quite a bit. You can see they're almost becoming a bit sort of crusty and not as foamy as what we normally see. So I don't know. And what would be interesting also, I'd love to know how many eggs were laid inside all of that. So you can imagine all of those balls of foam. There must be thousands of eggs in each one and that's a lot of tadpoles that are going to drop having each other once again. So bull elephants are involved as per normal. Must be such a stressful time as well with these females. They really must... No problem, you wonder how many hours elephants will sleep? Well, normally they don't sleep for too long. They're not like... Oh, let's see what happens here. Everybody seems to be getting a little bit funny with each other. But um, they're not like us as humans that need massive amounts of sleep in order to survive. So you'll find that they normally sleep for short periods, maybe 20 minutes at a time. So you'll have a situation where a big bull or these big females will go and just stand under a tree and they have like a little 20, 30 minute nap, if that, sometimes even shorter. And they'll have that periodically through the day and normally equates to about sort of six hours maximum in a 24 hour period that they normally sleep for, which is quite a lot when you think about it. The problem with Ellie's is that a lot of the time they can't lie down, particularly, you know, these big bulls, unless they can find a 45 degree slope. Oh, lots of commotion in the background. They can find a 45 degree slope or a termite mound that's a lot more comfortable, but otherwise their bulk works against them. It actually compresses their lungs and also their legs and they can get compartment syndrome and damage those quite badly. So they can't afford to spend three, four hours sleeping on their sides or on their legs or anything like that. And in the females cases that they've got young ones, so they can't afford to be down. If in the best sound. How cool is that? Those little rumbles are the best things to hear in the whole world. So, well, maybe not. Maybe lions roar is up there as well, but I love hearing Eddie's grumble. But I was saying that the females also, they, they don't tend to sleep very much because they've got to protect their young ones. So they'd rather have the young ones lying down. So they'll take very short periods of napping that will compromise or that will make up that um, four to six hours of sleep in a day. So it's not uh, not a lot of sleep if you're an elephant. Just, I suppose it's about as much sleep as we sometimes get, eh, Vildi? Yes, about six hours sometimes, depending if it's summer or winter. Lots of pushing and shoving in the background though. It seems as though they're still very unsettled by this whole process. Maybe this female just, or maybe some of the younger members of the herd are a little bit kind of funny about things and that's why there's a bit of pushing and shoving. Or there's some young bulls that are causing trouble once again, I would imagine that it must be a couple of the teenage bulls because the two big guys have really behaved themselves, particularly the really large male. He's in no way been aggressive. He's only approached very slowly, very methodically. He's had really no com sort of part in any boisterous nature whatsoever. So it must be one of the younger ones that's causing a bit of havoc. But look, the herd is moving. It's all of a sudden they've basically worked out that this little one can maybe walk a bit and they've started to move off and go off into the thicket. So interesting. I wonder if maybe the little one is getting some strength into those legs enough that they can actually start walking. Absolutely amazing. Very cool to see. Being spoilt this afternoon with our Ellie's. In fact, we've been spoilt with Ellie's 
for over the past year, well, since I've been at Safari Live, certainly we've had some incredible elephant stories and sort of sightings that have unfolded. So very, very cool to see. It would be so nice, though, if little Hosanna would make an appearance in amongst all of this because I'm quite surprised that he hasn't. He's normally the curious type and normally wants to know what's going on. Maybe he was curious earlier and they ended up chasing him because of his curiosity. So we'll try and see if we can find him somewhere here. Probably leave the Ellies to themselves. Like I say, if they go into a thick, dense area, I don't really want to follow them. I don't want to crash on trees and things like that. They're already hyped up as it is and it just doesn't make sense to push them any harder than they need to, well, than they already are being pushed by the big bulls and the fact that they've got a tiny little baby. But what a special afternoon it's been with this elephant herd. I've thoroughly enjoyed every second of it. You can see that young male is now starting to turn and also go into the Mulawati. Uh, Mulawati seems like a good place to go. Uh, I'm surprised they weren't in there most of the day, given how hot it's been. I'm also very surprised that this female gave birth right out in the open like she did. Maybe it's a good strategy. There's no way that she can get surprised by a lion or hyenas or leopard. If she's right out in the open, she can then see exactly what's going on. Right, Vildi, should we go find a spotted cat? Vildi says absolutely.